All right, engineers, in this video, we're gonna do basically a nice little flow chart, nice little diagram of the blood flow from the left ventricle into the actual neck to some of the structures in the head and maybe even some of the internal structures like the circle of Willis. Just so you know, we are gonna have another video going into a little bit more detail into the circle of Willis. For right now, all we're gonna talk about is from the left ventricle, all the vessels that is actually coming and supplying the head and the neck. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So first off, we said that we were going to start with the left ventricle because the left ventricle is basically the pump, right? It's a systemic pump. So if we start here first, the first place that we're going to go ahead and start is going to be within the left ventricle. The left ventricle is very, very powerful, very, very powerful muscle within this guy. When he contracts, he squeezes the blood out of the left ventricle and into what's called the ascending aorta through the aortic semilunar valve, right? As it comes into the ascending aorta, the ascending aorta goes up into this little part in the thoracic cavity where it starts to turn and make like a nice little arch. This part is called the aortic arch. Now, this is where it gets very crucial. From the aortic arch, there's three branches that come off of it, okay? One branch coming off of the aortic arch is called the left common carotid artery, okay? So one of the branches is called the left common carotid artery. The other branch that it's gonna give off is going to be what's called the brachiocephalic artery. Now this is a really important artery because the brachiocephalic is a big old trunk. When the brachiocephalic artery is fed, it branches into two other types of arteries. So off the brachiocephalic, we're going to have two branches. One, we're not going to talk about too much because we're going to discuss the other side, the left. But one branch off of the brachiocephalic artery is called the right common carotid artery. So one is called the right common carotid. We're going to spend a little bit more time in the left common carotid, but just make sure that you understand everything that we do for the left common carotid, all the branches are going to be the exact same for the right common carotid, okay? So we're just gonna do this for space sake. So one branch off of the brachiocephalic artery is going to be the right common carotid. The other branch that's gonna come off of the actual brachiocephalic is going to be what's called the right subclavian artery. So the right subclavian, okay? And if you really wanted to know, there actually is one other branch that can come off the aortic arch, and that is actually the left subclavian. Okay, so you can actually have the left common carotid, the brachiocephalic, and you can have another one, which is called the left subclavian. Okay, but now let's go ahead and get started into this left common carotid and see how it actually supplies multiple structures. So one thing here, left common carotid, what it does is it splits into two different components. One is it's gonna go internal and supply the circle of Willis, the other one's gonna go external, supply a lot of structures within the face and the neck. So let's go ahead and start external first and work our way internal. So from here, we give off what's called the external carotid artery. Now from the external carotid artery, it's gonna move upwards and it's gonna give off multiple branches along the path. One of the branches is called the superior thyroid artery, which obviously is gonna go and supply the thyroid gland. As it continues to move off, it gives off another branch that goes and supplies the tongue. This branch is called the lingual artery. So another branch is gonna be called the lingual artery. Okay, we don't need to put artery in there, we know it's gonna be the arteries. So one branch is gonna be the lingual artery. So we have the lingual artery, then we're gonna keep going up. What's the next branch it can give off? It actually can give off a branch called the maxillary artery, which can give off three different branches from that. And so rely a lot of different structures around the face. This is going to be the maxillary artery. So it's gonna give off a maxillary branch. So, so far, external carotid artery gives off a superior thyroid branch, a lingual branch, a maxillary branch, and then it's gonna give off another one. It's gonna give off a lot to supply some of the uh, muscles of the face. So it's gonna give off what's called the facial artery. Then as it continues to go up, it gives off another branch. One is actually gonna go and supply the actual posterior part of the skull, some of the muscles in the posterior part of the skull. This is going to be called the occipital artery. So it'll give off another branch which is called the occipital artery. And then one more branch that it'll also give off is called the superficial temporal artery. 
All right. So just so we're clear on that, external carotid goes superior thyroid, lingual, maxillary, facial, occipital, and the superficial temporal artery, okay? Kind of in that order. Now, the left common carotid artery is gonna give off the other branch. And the other branch is going to be what's called the internal carotid artery. The internal carotid artery is gonna start moving upwards. And ha what happens, it actually goes through a couple different holes within the skull, like the carotid canal, the foramen lacerum, and it gives off a bunch of different branches. So one of the branches that it can give off is called the middle cerebral artery branch. So it gives off a branch called the middle cerebral artery. Then as it continues, it gives off another branch. So it's gonna give off another branch that's gonna go more anterior, but it's like a communicating branch. So it gives off an anterior communicating branch. So it gives off what's called an anterior communicating branch. And this anterior communicating branch will interact with the other internal carotid artery. So for example, you know how we have, this is technically left internal carotid artery? Well, the right common will go into external and internal. So then we have the right internal carotid artery. That's also gonna give off a middle cerebral artery. It'll also give off an anterior communicating branch. When these anterior communicating branches come together, they give off anterior cerebral arteries. Like I said, we'll have another diagram where we go over the circle willis in more detail. Just giving you the flow concept. From the internal carotid artery, it gives off middle cerebral, anterior communicating, and it gives off another branch going posterior. This is called the posterior communicating artery. So it's called the posterior communicating artery. The posterior communicating artery is interesting because it's going to interact with some of the structures over here from what's called the vertebrobasilar system. Okay, we'll get there in a second. Then the posterior communicating artery is again one of those branches. The last one that it can also give off here, and actually can give it off along the path going up. So really, this is actually a branch coming off before we even go into these structures of the part of the circle, Willis. This one is called the ophthalmic, ophthalmic artery. Now the ophthalmic artery is really important because it actually is gonna go and supply one of those really, really, really important arteries that supply the eye, the central retinal artery. It also gives off some ciliary arteries, some lacrimal arteries, and even what's called anterior ethmoidal arteries too. A lot of branches off of these guys. We're not gonna go into that much detail though. Just getting the basic concept of the blood flow. Okay, cool. That covers that. And again, this, this is gonna be very, very important that you understand the posterior communicating, anterior communicating, middle cerebral, they're gonna be a very important component of what's called the circle willis. Now, let's go over here to the right subclavian. The right subclavian and the left subclavian, which is coming off the aortic arch, they can give off other branches. They can give off what's called vertebral branches. So vertebral arterial branches. So it's gonna give off some vertebral branches. These vertebral branches are gonna move through what's called the transverse foramina within our cervical vertebrae. As they move up, they come together and form what's called a bacillar artery. So then they'll come together and form what's called the bacillar artery. And there can be a lot of branches coming off of the bacillar artery. You can actually have like the anterior inferior cerebellar arteries coming off of this guy. You could have even the superior cerebellar arteries, the anterior spinal arteries. There even can be a posterior inferior cerebellar artery coming off of this guy. There's so many branches. Like I said, we can cover this in more detail in other future videos. But for right now, get the basic flow. Right subclavian, or left subclavian go into the vertebrals, that goes into the bacillar, and the bacillar can actually feed into the posterior part of the circle willis. What's connecting them is they're connected to the circle willis through the posterior communicating arteries, through the posterior communicating branches. And then from there, they can circle throughout the actual circle willis. One of the areas that they can go into is they go to, go to the posterior cerebral artery. But again, the whole concept here is that from this bacillar system into the posterior communicating artery, this could go to various parts within the circle willis. Okay, which again, we'll discuss in more detail when we talk about this individual diagram. Okay, so to recap, left ventricle, pumps blood into the ascending aorta, which goes into the aortic arch. From here, we can have three destinations. One we didn't show over here because it's gonna be the same as that one over there. It would be the left subclavian, okay, which can give off vertebrals. Another branch is called the left common carotid, which can split into two components. One is an external carotid, the other is an internal carotid. External carotid supplies some of the external structures via the name, like the superior thyroid artery, the lingual artery, the maxillary artery, the facial artery, the occipital artery, and the superficial temporal artery. The internal carotid artery will move up a little bit more internal. It'll give off an ophthalmic branch, which can go and supply the eye, like the actual ciliary artery, uh, central retinal artery. It can give lacrimal branches, anterior ethmoidal branches. 
It can also give off a branch to go to the middle cerebral arteries, which will supply like the temporal lobe, and even a little bit of the parietal lobe. It'll give off an anterior communicating branch. It'll give off a posterior communicating branch. And what happens is the brachiocephalic will also give off a right common carotid and the right subclavian. Right common carotid will still move up, same thing. It'll give off a middle cerebral branch, an anterior communicating branch, a posterior communicating branch. When the, when the anterior communicating branches come together, they form what's called the anterior cerebral arteries. When the posterior communicating branches come together, they form what's called the posterior cerebral arteries. And that same, that's coming from this guy here. Right subclavian and left subclavian give off the vertebral arteries. The vertebral arteries go into the basilar artery. The basilar artery can give off many, many branches. But he can feed into the posterior communicating arteries, which is a part of the circle willis. From there, he could go to the posterior cerebral artery, he could go to the middle cerebral artery, he could go to the anterior cerebral artery, many, many different branches, okay? So just so that we're clear on that. All right, so that pretty much for the most basic component covers the blood flow from the actual left ventricle up into the structures of the head and the neck. Just so that you understand, we will go into a little bit more detail on the circle of willis to get a little bit more specific so that it's very, very clear on all the branches of the circle of willis. But Ninja Nerds, I hope this made sense. I really do hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you guys did like it, if it did make sense, please hit the like button, comment down in the comment section, and please subscribe. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna step out of frame so that you guys can just take and jot all this down so that you guys have it. All right, Ninja Nerds, as always, until next time.